what's going on guys welcome back to the channel today we're going to be talking about ui kit versus swift ui which one is better and why so this is the question that i think most commonly pops up in the comments on this channel on other ios channels i also get a lot of emails and dms on my socials uh, from you guys who are, you know, learning iOS, which one do I start with? Do I go down the Swift UI rabbit hole or do I go down the legacy nature of UI kit? So I finally figured it was time to chat about this question um, and kind of share my thoughts because the answer is a little, a little muddled based on like what your goals are. So I'm going to preface with that cop out. So first and foremost, what is UIKit? What is SwiftUI? UIKit's a legacy way to build and configure UI. SwiftUI is the brand new shiny, not really brand new anymore, two-year-old shiny, you know, declarative, reactive user interface framework that Apple came out with in 2000 and I want to say 19 or 20, someone check me on that. So, you know, the legacy way has been around for quite a while. It's an evolution of AppKit which uh, is used on macOS to build applications there. And SwiftUI is meant to be, you know, cross-platform. So both of them have a lot of advantages. And let's start with uh, taking a big step back and talking about context and, you know, goal setting. So I think oftentimes as technical people, people get into the weeds of arguing about technologies and like what is better versus another technology. And if you think about it, it's a little silly, right? Better is really, you know, beholden to like what you're trying to do with it. That's like if you and I were arguing about like this paint is better than this paint. It's like, okay, like what are you trying to actually do with your paint, right? So the first thing I'll touch on is if you're looking to get a role in industry, like you want to get a job as a junior iOS engineer, mid-level senior, you know, whatever, you want to work as an iOS engineer for your career, I would wholeheartedly still tell you to go and stick with UIKit. And it's not because UIKit is per se better. Right? It might be the better choice for that goal, but it is you know, a fact of the matter that most applications, by virtue of them being legacy, are built in UI kit. Sure, they might have some Swift UI in them, and like those teams that work on them might be exploring Swift UI, but the bulk of the code is probably still in UI kit. So with that in mind, you know, you should learn UI kit first. Is it okay to dabble in Swift UI? Absolutely. Um, the I think advantage with that also is I think you got to take things one at a, one, one step at a time So I think if your immediate goal is to like learn enough to get like a job Once you have like a job and you're working and you're like somewhat proficient in a UI kit You know go and explore Swift UI, right? I think it's easier to go from UI kits and learn Swift UI than the inverse by virtue of UI kits just being like much more verbose and like the legacy way of doing things so that being one goal, let's move over to building your own app or, you know, maybe maybe you're working at like a startup or like a smaller org, which, which uh, requires you to build your own app from scratch and you're not going to go and work uh, and contribute to like something that's already like built up. Um, in that case, I think SwiftUI is a pretty, pretty big no brainer. So when you're working at like a startup, so long as, you know, the, you know, whoever runs that startup is okay with it and knowledgeable about SwiftUI, SwiftUI is the way to go, right? It's less code. It's pretty nimble. It's easy to go cross-platform with the you know single UI library. You can build on Watch OS. You can build on uh, Mac OS. You can build for iPad OS, iOS, right? Whereas if you're using UI Kit and you want to you know build like a Mac app, guess what? Like you got to go learn App Kit now, which admittedly is similar, but it is different enough where a UI Kit developer cannot pick up App Kit like overnight. Maybe if you're a rock star, I don't know. But that's kind of the kind of the thought process behind goal setting for picking which one is better for your situation and what you want to do. Now, a lot of you know that I have a lot of my own personal applications that I've built and written and maintained over the past you know several years, and most of my apps are written in UI kits. Actually, all of them are written in UI kits, um, and some of them are in Swift, and a lot of them are actually still in like Objective C slash Swift. And I think I found myself asking myself the question of, okay, like if I want to add a feature or change something, should I update it in SwiftUI? Like, should I add it in SwiftUI? Should I rewrite something in SwiftUI? And my answer to myself every single time, more often than not, I would say is why, right? Like, what's the point? What's the point if I take a view that I've written already and just rewrite it in SwiftUI for the sake of being like, oh, look, it's in the new shiny, like framework SwiftUI. 
I think more importantly, what I come across and I ask myself is, if I'm adding a new independent part of the application, be it a new view or a new view controller in its entirety, I think there, you know, I'm more, uh, I'm more like interested in going down the Swift UI route because it's isolated from the other part of the application where I can just build something from scratch and I can use some integration with UIKit to wrap it and you know do the UIKit Swift UI interop dance. So you know there's merits to it, and I think this is like such a subjective topic. Um, but if you want to like you know go and get a job in the next three or four years, stick with UIKit. Um, industry does not even interview yet for Swift UI. It's important. It's definitely around. You know, if, it depends what companies you're targeting. Larger the company, larger the app, like larger the number of developers that work on it, the harder it's going to be to you know move over to Swift UI. You have to also think about it from a business perspective if that is your goal. Um, a lot of companies don't see the merit in Swift UI uh, for just a rewrite for the sake of a rewrite, right? So it costs money, right? Engineers are paid very well. It costs a lot of money and time and like product overhead to go and do that. And if there's not a material difference in like earnings or some user facing product improvement, again, the same question arises of what the heck is the point? So that's one reason. Another reason actually I call out, which I was talking to a good buddy of mine and he pointed out is, imagine if you're trying to hire and you have an app in Swift UI and like you have five candidates to pick from. Versus UI Kit, you have 5,000 to pick from. I'm not saying five people know Swift UI versus 5,000 or it's that drastic. Um, it might be, but my point is you're slightly shooting yourself in the foot when you go with the newer thing. You're taking a risk on it, right? And this is actually the reason that a lot of Apple's own stuff internally, a lot of their own apps are not built in Swift UI, right? Some of them are that they're using to kind of push Swift UI, and they're, they, they themselves are like adjusting and you know, their, their engineers are learning. It's new for their engineers as well, even though it was built in-house at Apple. So the takeaway there is, pick the thing, UI Kit or Swift UI, that works best for you. I think objectively, I would definitely agree Swift UI is better, um, but it is different too, right? It's better, I say, because it's declarative. It's way less code. You don't have to write delegates and callbacks as often, right? You still do to some degree, but it's, it's truly different than UI Kit and the verbosity of UI Kit. Um, now there's a flip side of that where learning something declarative for someone who hasn't done it before is a little challenging. So personally, I remember when I first learned a reactive framework, it wasn't Swift, it wasn't iOS, it was actually Java uh, way back when. And I remember it took me a little while to like wrap my head around the fact that I don't have a callback to call or I don't call some type of like notification API or some function to let like the caller or the other side know that some event occurred, uh, which is similar to Swift, right? Like you have callbacks all over the place. And I think that mental shift for a lot of people going to Swift UI can be tricky. Um, and then add on jargon like bindings and state objects and observable objects. And it, it gets a little, it gets a little hairy, right? Um, it's, it's just a mental shift and of course Swift has its own flavors of it like RX Swift and there's some patterns like that with like Redux and whatnot. But for the majority of people, they're comfortable with delegates and data sources and closures and notifications sent to notifications to update stuff, right? And that's also the vast majority of content available to help learn, right? There's just not that much Swift UI content either. Um, to go about some learning. So I'm not saying it's a reason to, you know, discount Swift UI, but it is definitely a reason to consider when you're considering which one is better for myself based on what my goals are. So that's kind of all I had for you guys today. So um, a couple of things I wanted to go over some housekeeping. So I really want to start doing more of these videos where I get to actually share some of my thoughts and talk to you guys you know, looking into a camera and not at Xcode, which is uh, admittedly a little strange. So I've, I've tried to make an effort here where I've got a better lighting setup. I've actually got a legitimate mic, which looks like a big ice cream cone. Um, I've got, you know, just a better camera setup. So let me know if you guys think the quality is better of the videos. I really want to have fairly decent quality. I'm like kind of a quality nut lately. So let me know. Um, let me know what you guys want to see also in terms of Swift UI and UI kit. I always feel a little, uh, you know, I'm always confused when I make SwiftUI content because I think there's some of you that love SwiftUI, but I can't tell if I'm just annoying all the people that are waiting for UI kit content. So I want to balance out both, but at the end of the day, I want to do stuff that works best for all of you guys that watch because that's, that's why we make these videos because if nobody watches them, then 
I guess it's just uh, just me and uh, me and myself watching them. So let me know down below in the comments, and uh, yeah, let me know what other comment uh, commentary style videos you guys want to see. So I plan on doing things about like Iowa's career paths. Is it a good path? Spoiler: Yes, it's a phenomenal career choice. Um, you know, thoughts about interviews. I, I'm gonna make a video about Leet Code because a lot of iOS interviews ask about Leet Code, and in my opinion, it's like one of the silliest things out there. I think it has merit to a degree, but I'm not gonna get into the weeds of that right now. It'll be a controversial video, I promise. But uh, but yeah, that's all I've got for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video and haven't done so already, smash that like button down below. It helps out so so much. I can't even stress how much it helps out with the channel growth and the YouTube algorithm pushing videos. And of course, subscribe if you're into iOS and. Just like general tech stuff, I might start another series on um, just like the history of certain large apps. I think it's pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, that's all I've got for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video, do all that, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.